When I was in middle school, I got this manga as a gift for my cousin who clearly saw I was suffering from weebitis. The minute I started looking through the pages I saw, I saw that this manga was clearly not meant for kids my age. Regardless, I thought the story and the art were very interesting and I thought I'd share this unique manga with you all. So today we're going to be talking about Kashimashi. Kashimashi Girl Meets Girl was written by Satoru Akahori and illustrated by Yukimari Katsura. Its manga ran from July 2004 through May 2007 concluding with five volumes. It also has an anime, a video game, OVA, and a light novel. Before I go into my thoughts of the overall series, let's go into what it's about. This is Hazumu Osaragi. He was killed by an alien spaceship landing on him. How, you're asking? Well, let's learn a little about him first. Throughout his childhood, Hazumu has been seen as weak and effeminate, making him an easy target for bullies. For example, one of his passions is taking care of plants, and specifically flowers. I personally don't see that as overly effeminate, but I can see what Mr. Akahori was going for. His best friend and local tomboy, Tamari Kurusu, would often protect him against these bullies. Fast forwarding to his second year in high school, Hazumu is pressured by his best friends Tamari and Asuta, we'll talk more about him later, to confess his feelings to Yasuna. Let's also put a pin on who Yasuna is and why she rejects Hazumu. Devastated by this rejection, Hazumu goes up to Mount Kishima to be around the plants he loves so much. But while up there, an alien spacecraft crash lands on him, seriously injuring him. And by seriously injuring, I mean he's literally killed. The alien who crash landed into Hazumu does resurrect him, but oh no, what's that? Hazumu is brought back as a girl. <laughs> okay. Hazumu now has to learn how to navigate as a girl in high school and spoiler, he doesn't need that much adjusting in the manga because as I mentioned earlier, his character was already seen as effeminate. It's mostly other things like wearing girls clothing and adjusting how others treat him as a girl is what proves to be more challenging for him. Also, Yasuna, you know, that crush in the beginning that rejected him? Yeah, she's down now that Hazumu comes back to high school as a girl, and she ends up confessing her love back to Hazumu, which confuses him even more. Okay, now is a good time to talk about Yasuna. This is Yasuna, and you probably can't tell by the tone of my voice, but I really don't like her. Even the first time I read Kashimashi in middle school, I just didn't like her in general. So get this, since the time she was born, Yasuna Yasuna has had an affliction that makes her incapable of seeing males. Okay. <laughs> I swear, only in manga. To her, males are seen as covered in this gray, hazy blur, which makes it extremely difficult for her to tell one male apart from another, except through the sound of their voice. This makes her kind of a loner in school because guys mostly go ignored by her, and the girls don't really get her deal on why she basically ignores all the boys, and they probably think she's just stuck up or something. Which she basically is. In the manga, she's perfectly fine with being a loner. She she has that I do not intend to befriend anyone type of attitude, and this all changed in her first year of high school when she first meets Hazumu. She's able to see Hazumu more clearly than any other guy she's been able to see, except for his face, that's still a blur to her. She slowly starts falling in love with him, but when he confesses to her in their second year, she rejects him because she was afraid that he would eventually disappear from her vision. <laughs> okay. After Hazumu's transformation into a girl, Yasuna wastes no time trying to rectify her mistake and confesses her love to Hazumu, finally. But Hazumu's very confused on this and doesn't know what to do, especially since he's a girl now. I mean, I guess good for you, Yasuna, for being able not to really care if Hazumu's a girl or a guy, but it's just funny to me that she's more into him when he turned into a girl than before. She's that cold and distant, pretty perfect trope from manga. Like, she's really good at the flute, cooking, and basically looking impeccable 24-7. She's basically that girl. During the course of the manga, she does change, but if you ask me, and you are, she mainly does this because she likes seeing Hazumu happy, and he's the most happy when he's around his friends and family, and when they're all together. So if it were up to her, I just know that she'd keep him all to herself. 
This is why I always back my girl Tamari. The other part of this love triangle, Tamari Kurusu is Hazumu's childhood friend and resident tomboy. Being the awesome person that she is, she defended Hazumu from bullies and has basically stuck with him through thick and thin. She's had a crush on Hazumu for the longest time, that it's jarring for her when he turns into a girl as she's liked him as a boy. So at first she's annoyed that everyone is trying to have Hazumu adjust to this life as a girl by making him more feminine. But then she realizes he's exactly the same as he was when he was a boy except now he He's just a girl. <laughs> Since Tamari has always protected Hazumu, she tries to tell Yasuna to back off for making him go through heartbreak, but Hazumu, being a huge simp, wants to keep Yasuna around as a friend, so Tamari half backs off. Which ends up being a huge mistake on Tamari's part because Yasuna's intentions are not just to be Hazumu's friend. It's to quote unquote, keep Hazumu all to herself, which is sickening. If you're not rooting for Tamari at this point, I don't know what to tell you. She has to watch Yasuna basically brag about how she has Hazumu wrapped around her little finger. Yasuna even manages to kiss Hazumu before Tamari, which is so infuriating. Is this the thing that I get for putting you bitches on? Is it my fault that all you bitches are gone? You should have sent a thank you note, you little hole. Now! I'm going to wrap your coffin with a bow. Before I need to check my blood pressure levels, let's talk about the secondary characters in the story. We've got Asuta, Hazumu's friend from before the change. There's not really much to say about him other than he occasionally serves as comic relief. Actually, now that I'm thinking about it, all the men in this manga, excluding Janpu and Namiko, serve as some sort of comic relief. His shtick is that he finds Hazumu hot after the change, so he gets really into fantasizing about Hazumu, so much so that he ends up getting lost in thought, much to his own detriment. He does end up with his own girlfriend by the end, but she bears a suspicious resemblance to Hazumu. Next we have Ayuki Mari, who is also a classmate of Hazumu and the gang. She usually gives advice to both Tamari and Yasuma about their feelings to Hazumu. Ayuki is seen rejecting guys and lets Hazumu know that she's more comfortable being an observer rather than a participant of love, and in a way it's her own version of love. She's also really into biological science. Namiko Tsuki is the English teacher at Kashima High School, and she's also Hazumu's homeroom teacher. She's a 35-year-old hopeless romantic. She's never had a boyfriend, but pretty much made her focus all her time on her students, but, you know, she's still out there looking for love. When that alien that I'll talk about in a sec shows up to work at the school as well, she instantly becomes infatuated by him. His name is Hitoshi, by the way, and I'm not trying to keep it a secret or anything. I just don't want to repeat myself yet again when we get to him. Namiko is so obsessed with him that she has pictures of him on her walls and is constantly fantasizing about him, much like Asuta does to Hazumu. Also just like Asuta, it's much to her detriment. Hitoshi species can't express emotions, so this is all one-sided and I just wish Namiko could catch a break. I mean, please. Okay, finally, we're at Hitoshi Sora, arguably the second most important person slash alien to the story. I mean, we wouldn't have one if it weren't for him. Hitoshi the space alien arrived to Earth thanks to a spaceship run by this AI slash fembot named Janpu. He's the one responsible to resurrecting Hazumu into a girl. He originally came to Earth to study the emotions of the human race since the species became devoid of emotion due to his people discovering the means to destroy all life in the entire universe instantly. So in order to prevent this from ever happening, his people chose to discard their emotions. The downside to this was that they lost their sexual urges, so no one was procreating. So his species is on the brink of extinction. He came to Earth to research how to love each other in order to survive. He lucked out with Hazumu, as he's currently in a love triangle with Yasuna and Tomari. In order to more closely observe Hazumu, he ends up working at Hazumu's high school as a biology teacher. John Poo, like I mentioned before, is a gynoid and AI of Hitoshi's spaceship. She can levitate and bend light around her so others don't see her. She's kind of a woman child, which I don't like, just because I know what these tropes in manga are meant for, but I will say, I do really like her relationship with Hazumu. She loves him a lot. If you're wondering how Hazumu's parents reacted to all of this, they basically have always wanted a daughter, so it's a welcome surprise that he does come back as a girl. They're supportive in terms of buying her clothes to wear and just immediately accept her as a girl. I really really don't like how they made the dad this harasser in where he's always trying to take a bath with Hazumu, but his wife is constantly stopping him. It's not funny and it's really gross. That's your daughter, dude. Now that we've met the characters, you're probably wondering how it all ends. 
This cataclysm for the end of the manga is that Hitoshi confirms that Hazumu's life grain count is slowly dissipating due to the regeneration process he went through and only has one month left to live. The solution? Someone very close to Hazumu has to donate life grains to her to sustain her life. Hazumu, on the other hand, doesn't know that her friends know that she's going to die, and she kind of accepts it. On the day she's supposed to die, she falls off the school's roof, and Tamari jumps off the roof in an attempt to save her. However, before they both reach the ground, Hitoshi transfers the necessary life grain to Hazumu, and they both survive the fall. Waking up in the infirmary, Hazumu confesses her love to Tamari, effectively choosing her over Yasuna. Let's talk about the differences in the manga and the anime. For starters, in the anime, when Hazumu gets turned into a girl, she has a much harder time adjusting to her new body, and just in general with how she walks and talks and dresses. In the manga, she adjusts way quicker. Anime Tamari is also more willing to teach Hazumu about being a girl, but in the manga, she remains resistant to the idea. Hazumu is also more assertive in being annoyed with her parents and Hitoshi than she is in the anime. In the beach chapter of the manga, she runs to Asuta after being hit on by two guys that won't leave her alone, and she says that he's her boyfriend to get them off her back. In the anime though, it's the opposite, in which Asuta says that she's his boyfriend and starts protecting Hazumu. Another huge change is with Yasuna. In the anime, she develops the condition of not being able to see men as opposed to in the manga where she was always born with it. She develops the condition by her father getting angry with her one day. It only had affected her dad but then later got worse and she eventually was unable to see all males. It actually gets worse over time in the anime because she's also unable to see females in the 11th episode. Anime Yasuna is also terrified of males, but in the manga, she actually kind of just ignores them altogether. I think they made this change to make her more likable, and adding the tragic backstory to her also made her sympathetic as well. The ending was very much changed in the anime, where Hazumu's life isn't threatened, and she actually chooses Yasuna in order to help her cure her worsening eyesight. But when Yasuna starts to be able to see all people again, she breaks up with Hazumu, wanting to be more independent, earning Hazumu the biggest L in the series. In the OVA, Hazumu confesses her love to Tamari on Christmas and they get married in a ceremony held by Hitoshi. Out of all the Yuri mangas out there, this one is one of the most enjoyable ones in my opinion. Even though it does have a few tropes that I dislike, for the most part it treats the relationship between Hazumu, Tamari, and Yasuna with certain nuances while also exploring the different types of love other than sexual or romantic, and we see that through Ayuki and Janpu and even Asuta in the end. Apparently, Akahori wanted to write a story about true love, and when he was in the middle of developing the story, he wanted to stray away from his previous works. And if you don't know, most of it is etchy content and fan service. So in order to make the story more interesting, he considered that if he wrote a story between a male and a female, it would eventually lead to having sex. Mm. To mitigate that, he wanted to have the cast be all female. He knew this wasn't a new idea, so to spice things up, he changed the main character from being a boy to a girl, literally. He knew this would be a problem because usually being changed from male to female would cause the main character to focus on changing back, and not so much in the love interests around him. So he intentionally created Hazumu to not want to turn back into a male. How did he do this? Simply having the characters around him accept the fact that he is no longer going to be a male. Minimal pushback. I'm not going to go into how the story has parallels of being taken as a true trans lesbian love story because frankly, I'm not equipped to. But there is a video touching on the topic in which I'll leave a link in the description below. But the overall acceptance for Hazumu's transition and how the world around her treats her after, and even the acceptance of herself, is really grounded and insightful. I've never seen the anime, but the changes in the anime changed the story enough for me to push more for reading the manga more than watching the anime. The art done by Yukimaru Katsura is gorgeous, and apparently the uniforms were made by a Japanese clothing company specializing in cosplay costumes called Kospa. Katsura's art is so soft, with light pencil strokes and soft pinks and warm color tones. It really complements the softness of the story and the emphasis on the girls in the story. The story, even though there are moments of soft fan service, has a lot of heart, and I would recommend anyone who enjoys a good love triangle story with a twist to read this manga. That does it for today's video. If you've watched this far, please leave a like, comment, and subscribe. Thank you for watching.